Good morning, everybody, and here we are. Monday morning, we have this wonderful opportunity to get our day started and our week kicked off on the right step uh, with a dose of God's Word. This morning, I want to look at um, an account back in the Old Testament, in 1 Samuel chapter uh, 15. What we find here is uh, a great example. You know, we, we see so much in the religious world, and, you know, everybody just kind of does what seems to be right, um, in their own eyes, and as long as it feels good and it feels right to God, and as long as He's He's in it somewhere, then then uh, then we tell ourselves that God is okay, God is good, God is accepting of of what it is that I'm trying to do. We find an outstanding example um, back in First Samuel chapter 15. Saul is is king at this time. And God has told him to go and take care of the Amalekites. And what is very interesting is this, is the command and then Saul's response as to his completing or doing of that command. Let's notice some things here. 1 Samuel chapter 15, we don't have time to you know, uh, tear apart the entire chapter here, but we're going to look at the main points of what's being taught. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 15, and let me get back up here. I scrolled down earlier. Let me get back down here. Verse, I want, verse 3, all right, it says, Now go and attack Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and do not spare them. But kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. All right, so here's the command. This is what God had told King Saul to go and do. I want you to go to, uh, uh, to the Amalekites, and I want you to utterly destroy. That means a completeness. Uh, when we think about the word utterly, it is a completeness. All right? And he says, do not spare them. That means don't let anything remain. So what are they supposed to take care of? Man, woman? Infant, nursing child, ox, sheep, camel, and donkey. Now, there's a reason behind this, of this command, uh, but here's the command of what God said to do. Now, how did Samuel do that? Well, let's drop down and, and take a look at this. Now, that's not, you know, God wasn't very, uh, he, he, he was extremely clear. There was no gray area in it. There wasn't anything in this command that said, well, I wonder what he really means by that. And Well, we'll just kind of try to figure it out. It, no, it was very precise and very clear and to the point. So let's, let's drop down here and let's see what happened. All right, now, verse 8. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless, they utterly destroyed. Now, notice back in verse 3, what was the command? Utterly and don't spare. But what did they do? They spared, didn't they? Did they really obey uh, God? Did he really obey God? Well, not according to the command in verse 3 because he said, do not spare. But what did they do? They spared, didn't they? So everything that was worthless, yeah, they utterly destroyed all that. But they took it upon themselves to define what God meant by that command. Now let's notice God's response to all of this. He goes on and he says, uh, da, 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 verse 13, all right? Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Now Saul, in his mind, he, he thinks that he has obeyed God. He, he thinks he's done exact. He felt within all of his heart that he has done exactly what God said. But had he? God gave that very clear command in verse 3. Saul did not do exactly what God said. God said, don't spare. Saul spared. 
And now Samuel comes to him and he says, I have done what God said. Notice this, verse 14. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of oxen which I hear? Saul said, They have, been, uh, they have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep, the oxen, to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet, and I'll tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak on. So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, you, were you not the head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are commanded. Now notice these next two verses. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on a spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed. Oh, here is this great blinders and cloud uh, that, that surrounds the minds of so many people today. Saul, uh, in, in all of his heart, he said, I have obeyed. I have done what God said to do. No, he did some of what God said to do. Doing some of what God said to do is not the same as doing what God said. What we have is a great example is that Saul thought in all of his heart, I've done what God said to do. And you know, a lot of times we can come across that same mindset. I've done what God said to do. We may feel that we have done what God said to do, but in reality, we very well may not have done what God said to do. Notice again, verse 19. And uh, he, he says, Why did you swoop down on the, soil, uh, on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Verse 18, he sent you on a mission to destroy Saul said, but I have. But in reality, he hadn't. And here was this great example, that something that we really need to understand, something that is really lacking in the religious world today, is so many go with what they feel in their heart of what God wants and what God says, but not really what God says. You know, we can pick any Bible subject. We can talk about worship. We can talk about salvation. We can talk about church. We can talk about, you know, the way that we live. And we could go on and on and on, you know, right on down the line. But it always comes back to, is that what God said or is that what I want him to say? You know, for example, just, you know, salvation for, for you know, I want to be saved based on John three sixteen, and that's it. I want to be saved. Um, by faith through grace, as Paul wrote to those that were already saved in Ephesians 2, 5 through 8, and completely dismiss what Jesus said in Mark 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, or what the apostles taught on the day of Pentecost, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Acts 2, and in verse 38, said, oh, but I have obeyed what God, or worship. You know, we want praise teams, we want uh, praise leaders, we want uh, worship leaders, we want choirs, we want music, we want all these types of things. That, oh, I have worshiped God. Have we? If we do so outside of the New Testament pattern, which all we can find concerning such things is singing. There's not one mention in all of, uh, in all of the New Testament uh, where any church was instructed to use any form or type of instruments. Not a single solitary one. So when we add such things, have we really obeyed the Lord? Your immediate response might be, well, I just don't say anything wrong with it. That was the same response in Saul's heart as well. Now, I'm going to leave you with that. I'm gonna, there's your dose of God's word today. Go back and look at this. There's a lot in 1 Samuel chapter 15 that we just don't have time um, this morning to really dive into. But here's the basic point. We may do some of what God said, but we may not do what God said. And the result of that is disobeying God and working evil and wickedness in the sight of God. 
hey, go back and study this. Think about the things and the points that we've made and, and pray for wisdom to understand these things. And God has promised in James chapter 1 that if we lack wisdom, he'll give it to us. But we have to be open and humble uh, to see that wisdom and to grasp that understanding. So, hey, I hope you all have a great day. Lord willing, tomorrow we'll get back and get us another dose of God's word. Until then, hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.